So guys, very exciting news. We're on our way to Berlin. And we're going... Where? But to Berlin. Right. <laughs> Still keys with us as well. And I'm going to Berlin. I'm going to see the world. Falls ihr euch fragt, wo wir uns befinden, wir sind im wunderschönen Berlin. And we are going to show you 20 best places to see in Berlin. Brandenburger Tod, Kirche, Museum, noch ein Museum, Jackpot Charlie, Apfelmann, große Rakete. So, we're here in Berlin not just for having fun and sightseeing. We're also here for grading. <coughs> we need to color grade our, our movie and uh, that's going to be done by our buddy Lutz. Oh. Hello, oh. making off time. Making off oh, team. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Lutz, Hi. what's up? <laughs> I'm having a coffee. So, yeah, welcome to my little um, secret underground layer. Um, I do the color grading for you and I did it before for Science of Light. I was like impressed by all the work that went into your film and I wanted to be a part of it and... And you offered to grade the movie for free? That's what I did. Yeah. Because I believed in you guys. I believed in that they, story. And, and that paid off. You got nothing out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and now from, I like, learned from your mistakes and you offered us a second time. Yeah, the second time. Uh, uh, usually you have a lot to set up in your camera. It's a lookup table. Yeah. It's a specific look. And his name is Lutz. Yeah. So basically, just add the Z. So it's, it's a perfect better, name for a uh, for a grading. guy who does yeah color grading. Well, that Joe, that made made waves already. So um, <laughs> I've probably heard it a thousand times. Yes, every week. Um. <laughs> so let's start by addressing this question: Why do we need to color grade a black and white movie? Well, on set we shot with two cameras. Then we filmed the insert shots much later with yet another camera and in somewhat different conditions. And on top of that we also have miniature VFX shots. And as a result all of these shots may be differently exposed, with different brightness or contrast. And we need to balance them so they would look like they are a part of the same film, right? Aside from the basic balancing you might want to do creative decisions like uh, darkening some part of the shot or highlighting something that's important. So that's basically the reason for color grading. So with that in mind, let's see what goes into grading a shot from the film. So yeah, so I'll turn this on and let's see what you guys see on set. Boom! So I had your look and you told me like you wanted to have it more old, more used. So I started with the lens blurring on the edges so I make it visible for you so you see it mm -hmm. on site. Then it was a vignette coming in. Uh -huh. What this one? What this one doing? Yeah, it's uh, blurring up the image. Uh -huh. so, so the whole image is too crisp because it's shot digitally, right? Exactly. So I'm blurring it, so we have more like an. So it looks more like a perfect older film. Yeah. Also, also the lenses we used are more digital. They're new. Mm -hmm. The glass is sharper, so this would probably simulate an older lens, which is much softer, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is just a glow, adding a little bit of bloom in the highlights, just a tiny bit. Okay. For to start with. Okay. Um, so now this is where the magic happens. Boom. You see, it, so the picture got zoomed in a little bit, mm -hmm. but it started getting imperfect. So we come closer into this. You see, we are getting great. Yeah. Yeah. Then I added a little bit of blue. Just to give it a little bit more of silver look, so it's not like yeah. pure black and white. So there is color actually. It has a little bit of color when it comes from from you know this is just from from the buy and process. So then uh, we had this uh, situation where Dino like said like, well these shots I had a little bit more contrast and blacks and stuff, and then I felt like okay, so let's print it a little bit darker and added a little bit more punch to it. And yeah, the another thing that comes with the um, using a plug and code fill box okay. um, for this, uh, it has this little neat feature when you can go in and enable gate weave and it's simulating some old cameras. The thing is when you have film and you're shooting film, it's like it's moving in the camera. Because it's a mechanical process, obviously, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So you see, there is nothing really going here. It's extremely static, right? It's completely static. Yeah. You see that yeah, the it's... movement and the flag and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought like it's it's a really nice effect. Yeah, exactly. That gives a little bit of flavor to the to the image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's actually funny in the old days, they tried to get rid of those props yeah. and gray, <laughs> and nowadays they try to you know return to them. So yeah, basically that's the first step. Uh, on on the second step, we've added effects like more glow on the face. And that's something that Dino and I were, were like, please put more glow in. He wasn't really happy about it because he had a good point. You said it looks like 1930s movie. I was more, you know, like in the 60s, we've been already in the color area and then the quality was way better than back in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, but our, our always our mantra is uh, aesthetic uh, over aesthetic logic. Aesthetic over logic. That's our mantra. Yeah. I think nowadays you gotta you gotta overdo it a little bit for people to actually feel you did something because you know if you just do it like completely accurately like it would be in the 60s it would just look like a boring film, right? Well, I still don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, uh, Luca uh, asked me if I can show you a little, little interesting feature. Uh, it's called a pace tracking, and I can analyze this. So it recognizes it automatically the face, right? And it tracks it. And then I can, you know, like removing his eye bags, for example, or pushing more eyelight to it and um, sharpening the eyes. So it automatically sees this and we can also like, if he's got a dirty forehead, we can uh, clean that out, uh, can smooth that out. So it's like he's younger. Ah, cool. I turn everything off. So this yeah. is like, like how I got it. But yeah. this is how uh, the print we've just built it. It just explains, reacts to your VFX. And from there I am, removed a little bit in the sky to boot, just to uh, be more closer to the close-up shots. Then we have our hero, the glow. Yeah. And at, at the very end, we all came to the idea, there's no drama. Mm -hmm. So we reduce the luminance even more. And now it looks great. Yeah, and now it's a full. This is obviously a really nice VFX clip I've received from you guys. And we had a problem with the main actor. He uh, tended to be a little bit too dark or a nice contrasty in this one. So we've added mm -hmm. a more punch to him. But how do you do it since he's, since he's glued to the background, right? So normally, normally what I would have done in the last years would be taking a, a pen and start to making a mask around him, blah, 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 and animate it, rotoscope it, track it until it fits. And now we have this little neat feature, it's called a magic mask. Basically, you go here, so you see there is a painted stroke, mm -hmm. and then you track it all the way through, and then hope for the best yeah. that the artificial intelligence is doing all the work for you. Nice, huh? Yeah. So, and after that, it looks like awesome. Mm. Magic. AI is good. Anyway, yeah, uh, we hope this uh, shows the whole process and what you need to do to make your film look good, even if it's black and white. There's still a lot of work to do, right? So, hey, man, it's like never underestimate black and white. Yeah. But also giving yourself boundaries makes you a better art artist. And uh, how David Fincher says, it's, nowadays you can do everything, but it's about what you're not going to do. And if you're not choosing color, it's a more clear and challenging process, but you can get better results artistically. So, whatever that means. Uh, see you soon. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen aus Deutschland. Yeah. So guys, what are you doing right now? Scoot around. Scoot around.